So in this video, we will try to parallelize uh, the new version of Geisidel that has much better uh, local cache locality than the previous example. So just to recap, we already uh, acknowledged the fact that there is a way of getting lots of parallels by using the red flag uh, Gauss-Idle algorithm, but we uh, dismissed that one since uh, we got such a poor memory locality. Instead, we have this new algorithm where we update uh, the entries of the matrix in the natural order, but we do it in a temporary blocking way. We have the active region that uh, once we updated uh, all the points of the active region, we slide it downwards, and the active region is it becomes the block, the cache block in this kind of blocked algorithm. But we still have data dependence, uh, as, as since we are inheriting the natural order Gauss-Seidel. Uh, so how do we do, go about optimizing, uh, sorry, about paralyzing this application? Uh, so uh, what we have done here is, is to, first of all, divide uh, the work between the cores. And now we do it in, in uh, contrary to the red-black uh, algorithm where we divided the work uh, Line-wise, here we divide the work column-wise. So core zero um, will we'll, um, update the first quarter, the leftmost quarter of the matrix, and uh, and so on between these different cores. What we also have done is to introduce some kind of synchronization flags. So in this synchronization flag, uh, we're going to use uh, the value in the synchronization flag to make sure that the cores don't get out of sync. So this is how it works. We're going to see our worker here, core zero, start to update its value until it reaches the flag, and we then sets it to one. It's the next worker updates its values and then sets it to one and so forth. So let's look at that again. So what is going on with these synchronization flags is that we make sure that since there is some data dependencies still in this algorithm, we make sure that the second core doesn't start working on its values until it knows that the values uh, to the left of it have been updated. So these synchronization flags are updated by uh, uh, the core to the left of them. And the core to the right of them just looks at its value, could just busy spin on that value until it sees that the value has, uh, has been, uh, the value of that flag is increased to contain the right value. And, and the value you write into these flags is uh, the iteration uh, age of the, the data element to the left. So by doing this, we do pr produce lots of communication, synchronization communication between the cores. But it's a kind of communication that we uh, refer to as a producer-consumer communication. So the core to the left is the one that writes the value the core to the right is the one that reads the value. So we have one writer and one reader, and that never changes. So that's a producer-consumer. The left produces, the, uh, the right consumes. Um, and with this, this way of, of dividing the work, we only have n-fold parallelism if this is an n by n matrix. Um, um, so that is, you know, lots of communication and not, not, not uh, great parallelism. So this was a theory, uh, implemented this, and we ran into quite a lot of problems. And so in theory, this, this would work at least scale up to some small number of cores. Uh, but when we uh, implemented this, we encountered one major and two minor problems. Uh, the major problem that we ran into uh, was the fact that the size of this matrix was a you know, very nice power of two kind of size. In the real world, it was actually a three-dimensional problem, but just for the sake of it, let's assume that we have 512 by 512 elements. So we have 64 cache lines in this dimension and 64 cache lines in that. Uh, it, it, so not 64 dimension, cache lines in this dimension, and then we have 512 rows in that dimension. And if you look at how the work is, is divided here, uh, you can see that the first core will work on a quarter of of a line. So it will work on 16 cache lines. The next one will work on 16 cache lines and so on. And if you look at, at the, the cache, 
uh, of the first core uh, and see how these 16 cache lines are lined out uh, in how they are indexed into the cache. They are indexed into neighboring sets in the cache. So the first 16 uh, sets will be used by this core. The next 16 sets will not be used but by, by the, the first core since those are the data elements that the second core will update and, and so on. So there will be 16 cache lines that are used by the first core. Then there will be three uh, chunks, 16 cache lines each that are not used. And then we use the next set. Uh, so as you can imagine here, this uh, core will uh, use its set in the cache in a very uneven way. And the same thing, of course, will happen to the other cores as well. So all of them will, you know, use their sets. If every six, they will use sixteen sets, and there will be forty-eight sets that are unused, and so on. And they will just stagger which sets are being used in, in each cache. So you should uh, notice this from um, when we talked about padding, the need for padding of data structures. This is a very similar approach, uh, but uh, here you should also know that that it's how we divide the work between. Uh, uh, between the cores. If we had five cores instead, then we would have divided these uh, chunks in, in a much more uneven um, number of cache lines, and this may not have become such, such a big problem. So that was one problem. Uh, we clearly need, need to do some padding. And we also had a problem with loop nesting. So we, we discussed before that uh, when you deal with caching, you, you should you know, uh, nested loops uh, you should make sure that the inner loop works in, in row-wise and the, the other loops work uh, column-wise in a two-dimensional space. And even though uh, the person working on this was a PhD student in computer architecture, he actually did, did it the wrong way. Uh, and this was good and bad. The, the, the semi-good news was that the compiler automatically managed to compensate for that, to found the fact that he, he nested it in the wrong way. So the compiler fixed it almost all the time. So he ran into a problem where he made a tiny little code change somewhere, and suddenly the compiler couldn't find optimization anymore, and he ran into a performance problem. Uh, another major problem we ran into was that the flags that were used to synchronize between the threads, they were allocated too densely. So of course, the flags are not uh, laid out in the, uh, in the right in the middle of the matrices physically, as I showed you in that picture. That the flags themselves have, have, a, a, have a separate uh, matrix where, uh, where they're being accessed. And in that matrix, um, uh, the student had actually put them too densely together, so they created some false sharing. Uh, so all those three things together, once you fix that and you run on the real architecture, so here we actually run it on a dual socket system. Uh, so we had four cores per multi-core um, and uh, we had some kind of coherence between the local caches and coherence between the, the third level caches. Um, so we had the uniform and the non-uniform kind of coherence. Um, that's the system we ran it on. And looking at the final performance here, um, we, you know, when we implemented all this, uh, including the padding, uh, including the nice layout of, of the flags and so on, um, the um, the final performance uh, of this system is, is about three times higher uh, than the performance we saw of the original piece, uh, original code. So lessons learned is that um, it's not just about parallelism. Uh, it's about finding uh, the right amount of parallelism without sacrificing data locality uh, in, in the game of, of finding the parallelism. So it's, it's a design where you would like to avoid the Amdahl's law uh, avoiding serialization effects, uh, and you would like to find uh, enough parallelism uh, in your application. So in, in the third lab, uh, you will uh, look at parallelization of a similar kind of, of uh, algorithm, Gauss-Seidel, uh, looking at a couple of, of different, slightly simpler aspects on how to parallelize it.